Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? It's a lovely, bright, and somewhat damp autumn morning. If you can hear a sort of a grinding noise in the background, it's because I drove through a puddle in this car, and if you drive through a puddle, for some reason, it deposits uh, mud on the discs or the pads or something, which makes a sort of a, a grating noise. Changing down into third gear to go through 30 mile an hour zone. It was a tip that someone gave me from a driving course they went on because they've been caught speeding. And it's very difficult to uh, do anything other than 30 miles an hour if you're in third gear. Can you hear it? Sounds like the, uh, someone rehearsing for the awful lot of coffee in Brazil with maracas in my front offside wheel. Anyway, how are you? I hope you're well. I'm well. I'm going into work somewhat earlier than normal, which means I think I'm, I'm still too late to uh, run into the cabbage pickers. But still early enough to surprise the girls when I get to work with the fact that I haven't screeched up to the door 30 seconds before the patient's due. We've had a development with regard to my pro, uh, new you know, scheme of charging people in advance, sending people invoices for payment by 5pm on the uh, one clear day before their appointment. So for example, if their appointment's Wednesday, then they have to pay by 5pm Monday their invoice. And uh, we answer any queries about this by just simply pointing out that there's a very high uh, correlation between the people who don't pay their invoices and people who don't turn up for their appointments. So if they don't pay their invoice, then we cancel their appointment and rebook it. And it saves us having a uh, waste of time, you know. But it does mean that they have to part with their money um, 48 hours early and also uh, part with their ability to screw us over by simply not turning up um, and also there's some minor problems like obviously estimating what the treatment they're going to need is you know you have to buy but we give everyone a quote so for the most part that's not a problem but it is a problem if someone says oh, I need to come in and uh, I, want, I, need, I want to have a tooth out but even then we can invoice them what it costs to have a tooth out and then if it turns out they don't they want a root treatment or something then we're not you know we're not overly concerned because we've got some money in the bank that they can put towards their treatment or we can refund you know we've got a lovely patient young uh, well he's not a young lad he's a uh, just pre-retirement I suppose but uh, always brings us in a small uh, box of chocolates or a box of biscuits uh, apropos of nothing much at all and every time he does it I say to him look honestly you don't need to do this this is it's very generous of you but it's not necessary blah 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 and he's like oh well you know not to worry I've got them anyway and uh, and uh, he he, he does come in for an exam scale and polish so we charged him 123 quid which is the exam is 45 and the uh, scale and polish is 78 and uh, just in case you're wondering why it's that much is because obviously there's the fallow time we can't use the surgery after he's um, whoever's you know had an aer aerosol generating procedure plus uh, there's a slight uh, increase in uh, cost and of uh, consumables and washing gowns and things like that so and also um, we try not to encourage people to come in for scale and polishes for cosmetic reasons there, there are some patients who will prefer in the same way as there are some patients who prefer not to cut their own hair and go to the barbers to get it done there are some patients who prefer not to brush their own teeth really you know in, all, in any sort of meaningful way and, and come in and have the hygienist do it for them uh, once every few months 
and we've tended to get rid of those sort of people. Uh, I tell them that uh, the gum treatment is a clinical treatment and uh, you can't just book a hygienist like you can ring up and, and book to have your nails, uh, you know, nail extensions done or anything. Which I think is, uh, I mean, it's an interesting point in so far as the deregulation of uh, hygienists was predicated on <clears throat> on that very, pre you know, that was that, that very premise that people should be allowed to go and see the hygienist when they feel like it, you know. They shouldn't have to go through the dentist and be diagnosed with gum disease to see the hygienist. They should just wake up one morning and think, do you know what, my teeth feel like they could do with a hygienist visit and just go and get a hygienist visit. Now, now I'm not saying that uh, you know, if you've got a wedding coming up or something that you, you shouldn't have your teeth polished because it's not a clinical procedure, that would be cosmetic. And so I'm not against cosmetic cleaning as such, but I am against people um, abrogating their responsibility to brush their teeth and thinking that they've handed it off to the hygienist. Because those people, you have a lot of trouble, they, their eyes start glassing over when you talk to them about disclosing tablets and plant control and stuff like that. And, uh, and you know what they're thinking, they're thinking, look, you know, I don't know to bother with all this. The hygienist does all that. The hygienist cleans my teeth. So, so, you know, the GDC pushed very hard, and I'm sure the hygienist uh, beat, the beat this shit, what's it called, beat, beat the SHT, BSDHT or something, uh, pushed very hard for direct access, which basically means that anyone can can ring up and just ask to see the hygienist without having to go through the dentist. And, uh, you know, it worked fine uh, for about five minutes and then they realised that um, basically hygienists don't want a bunch of patients turning up who haven't seen the dentist. You know, they tend to rather appreciate the patients who have seen the dentist and that has done a check-up and decided that... Uh, a hygienist visit would be a good idea. Um, a, a, some sort of triage, and that's that's not just because, you know. I mean, how does a hygienist do a checkup? You know, in the same way as how does a dentist do a checkup? Dentists, I don't think, are allowed to. Uh, I don't know. They may be, but I don't think they're allowed to do uh, checkups on patients. They tend to. I've got a dentist, and uh, if he gets a patient in that is not a repair or a simple or a full fall he um, has in the past has sent them to me and said please will you just prescribe some dentures for this patient and I'm like you know no <laughs> hey you're the dentist you, you make your own arrangements I'm not going to prescribe dentures because you want to make them but it helps they're in a difficult position because they really need a dentist sometimes they think oh a dentist should look at this patient and in the same way as you know if you order um, well it used to be the case that if you ordered drugs and things from uh, suppliers like dental directory then um, they can't really um, dispense them to you without a dentist signing off on the fact that uh, signing off on, on the dispense, the dispensary. So they had a little tame dentist in their basement who works in a tiny little cupboard who just spent his time countersigning drug orders. And I'm not going to be a, I'm not going to be that dentist. <laughs> on behalf of my local dentist. Um, oh dear. Listen to that wheel. You think the bloody wheel was about to fall off? I don't know what to do. 
Short of getting a hose that's great in clean water, I suppose it'll stop sooner or later. Or perhaps there's mud on the inside of the uh, wheel arch or something. So anyway, the uh, the hygienist didn't like the fact that uh, the patients were turning up, and you know you might get a <laughs> you might get someone in who's got quite serious periodontal problems who needs a six point perio chart and uh, root planing under local anaesthetic. So, so what is the, uh, your typical hygienist? Your typical hygienist, who's worked all her life, and it's usually a she, uh, just uh, doing the tickle round, because the dentist says that to the patient, oh, you need to see the hygienist, and get your lower incisors descaled. Um, What's she going to say when a full-blown perio case turns up? Is she going to say, you know, okay, you've paid, you've paid to have your teeth cleaned, but I've got to tell you that it's going to cost three or four times what you expected because they're, they're three or four times worse than what we expected. You know, I mean, I've had patients complain in the past because uh, they've, they've come in just said they needed a scale and polish. They've needed it done over possibly two visits and they've needed it done under local anaesthetic. And we've told them that we can do all that and we can do all that on the spot. That we can, you know, we can extend their appointment on the spot and, and do the necessary, but obviously it would affect the cost. Uh, certainly just the time it takes to give the local affects the cost. And, and within that £78 now, we have the actual cost of the local built in, so there is no extra anymore. £78 was, was what we used to put the cost up to when it was more complicated than we thought. And so now it's always more complicated. So therefore, it's always the more complicated fee. The old uh, 49 I think it was, has, has gone by the wayside now. But <clears throat> she still complained, you know. She complained because she said I'd been quoted for 49 and I was charged, I was told I needed X, Y, Z more, therefore it was 78. So I was I was told 49 and I was charged 78. You know, and it's the same. I, I, I understand how she feels. It's like when I go to the optician and I say, I, I, I need an eye test, I need a new pair of glasses. And they say, right, well, you know, you've got astigmatism. That was the big thing, wasn't it? Oh, you've got astigmatism. You need special glasses. Okay. Now, all right then, so now astigmatism, you've got special glasses. Now you need, uh, what about um, anti-glare anti, anti uh, coating? 100 quid. I don't know. Do I need, you know, so you go in there and I've just spent over a thousand pounds on three pairs of glasses. One uh, new pair of verifocals, new pair of tinted verifocals, and and a pair of verifocals that I need for work because of, uh, I'm short-sighted and now I, I need uh, verifocals even now to uh, view computer screens and stuff like that. And you know, and that's, I always felt with opticians, they always added it on, you know, it was always this extra. That's why we don't, that's why we don't add stuff on. We don't, whenever someone says to me, how much is a root treatment? I always tell them 400, 500, 600 quid, whatever. That, and that includes the x-rays and it includes filling in the access hole. It's a, it's a complete price. I don't have to say to them, oh, then plus, Plus there'll be 25 quid for the x-rays. You know, plus, of course, you're going to need a filling to repair the tooth after the root filling. Therefore, you'll need a... Hello. Something big coming down the road. He's all right.
you know, plus you'll need a filling to repair the tooth off to the root filling, so that's another 93 quid. You know, this is all. And this is why, if you're trying to hide costs, you always just charge the headline fee, you know? You don't say, uh, you don't go, you don't give people a breakdown if you're trying to hide the fact that you're overcharging. You just say, this is the cost of building your house, Mr. Watson, going to be 75,000 quid. And you're like, well, in that, if you're sensible, you then say, well, I'd like, I want that broken down to how many people will be working on it, how many hours, how much you're paying them per hour, how much is materials, you know, how much is regulatory costs. Um, and with, with our quotes, they are broken down into fillings, root, tr root trims, extractions, etc. Tr but within, well, within that, the root filling is, we just quote one fee for the root filling. And if the patient turns around and says, I don't, you know, want, it's a very rare bit, but they would say, I didn't want it, I didn't want a filling with it. Afterwards, then, uh, then it wouldn't make the slightest bit of difference to the cost, because that re it removes the patient's ability to uh, argue against having treatment, you know, on the grounds of um, that they, they, they don't want to pay for that, that part of it, you know. So, someone comes in for a checkup and uh, and you do get these people, they come in for a checkup and you say, oh, I need to take some x-rays to have a look for decay in between your back teeth, because I can't see in between your back teeth without an x-ray and they might say, well, is that going to cost me any money? Is that going to cost anything? Is that extra? You know, they've been stung once before, and now they're determined to ask everybody, you know, who says, "Oh, you need this? Are you are you adding to my bill?" You know, it's like being in a restaurant where the bloke comes round and says, "Like, uh, would you like uh, a little uh, sorbet in between meals?" And it's sort of more or less. Uh, understood that that's free of charge or the mints after are free of charge but sometimes they say to you know or, or if you want a glass of uh, you know a bottle of water or something they're quite within their rights to charge for water uh, but you have to sort of trust that they're going to be reasonable and fair with you otherwise you wouldn't go back would you anyway hygienists have had a coach and horses driven through this open access because um the General Dental Council are now making this argument that uh, you can't do any treatment with uh, informed consent if you haven't explained all the possible alternatives to the patient and you can't explain all the possible alternatives to the patient if you haven't done a thorough examination and uh, therefore unless you've made a note that you've carried out a full examination then they don't accept that you could have had a meaningful discussion with the patient about what their alternatives were, therefore the treatment, the eventual alternative that they uh, agreed to, can't have been agreed to with their con informed consent. So there you go, so you've got hygienists who, you know, where they say, oh, this is going to be great, hygienists are going to start opening up hygiene shops in the high street and they're going to own their own businesses and they're going to uh, undercut dentists because it, this all arises out of a long-standing dispute which goes back to 1990 pretty much over the fact that the uh, dental estimates board as it was then thought they were paying out too much money for dentists to do scaling and polishing because every time a dentist did a checkup he did a scale and polish and even if you only put one polishing gum or one tooth, you could claim. And so every scale, every exam was a scale and polish. And then along came Aubrey Shyam, who said that, uh, basically he argued that patients who went to the dentist ended up having more work than patients who never went to the dentist, which was, you know, what the Monty Python would call the stay in the bleeding obvious. And uh, but then twisted that argument to say that den dentists actually were bad for people's teeth, and if you go to the dentist, you're going to get some treatment that you wouldn't have got if you hadn't have gone. Needless to 
say the professional was up in arms about this. But it suited the Department of Health's narrative, which was to reduce the number of um, scale and polishes that were done. So what they did was they uh, greatly reduced the well, they reduced the fee relative to the checkup for scale and polishes, in the hope that the dentist wouldn't find it cost effective. Um, and that they would refer scale and polishing to what they saw as more highly qualified and better process workers, which hygienists were, and um, in fact had the reverse effect because as the fee for the scale and polish went down, it was far more likely that the dentist was just going to do it on the spot with the checkup while the patient was already in the chair, and, and far less likely to refer the scaling to the hygienist. So hygienists, uh, they don't want to own their own businesses. They don't want to see patients who may have advanced gum disease who haven't been triaged. Um, and uh, they can't carry out checkups, so the patients can't give informed consent if they haven't seen a dentist. So that pretty much, you know, has put the kibosh on uh, direct access to hygienists. kind of neatly wrap things up as we're coming to work I've released sort of um, I'm releasing about two of these a day at the moment which is about the most I can do which takes about an hour of post-production to do this you wouldn't believe the things that go wrong like for example I might start talking into this camera which is my phone and which starts straight away uh, and uh, or I might um, and then I might talk for a minute and then turn the car on and then the car camera comes on, and of course I realise that, uh, that you're going to have a black screen for a minute while I'm talking because uh, there's no video recorded from the car. So I now have to remember to turn the car on, and then uh, the next, what's the next thing I do is then I then forget to turn the phone on. So anyway, there's no end of things that can go wrong, you know. And that's without going into the fact that they're recorded at different video resolutions, the two, the two signals, and so uh, one is, I think the phone is downgraded. It's all the human experience. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.